But before I start, I want to give my guest, I'm not going to tell you who she is. She's going to tell you who she is. Catherine, say hello and tell us who you are and what you're doing. In case there's anybody out there that doesn't know you. Hi there, everyone. It's great to be here, Stuart. You are a fabulous host. It's always fun to work with you. You've got such enthusiasm, and of course, it's great working with another professional. So thank you for having me today. I'm Catherine He, and I'm the founder of Customized Management Solutions, and we provide social marketing services for the travel industry. Spent my whole entire career in travel, tourism, and hospitality, and I found that our industry needs some help with marketing and social marketing is what I do and the tourism industry is where I do it because it's the passion of my life. So it's great to be here, Stuart, and um, thank you. Well, thanks for being here, uh, Catherine. So if you are a guest here with us today, if you've never been on one of these these shows, these programs, or part of these sessions, welcome, guest. Uh, I did open this up to the entire industry to join. Typically, this Ask Steward Hour is for uh, my boot campers, folks who are enrolled in group boot camp. Uh, but I love giving back, giving out free stuff, if you will. And as Catherine does, we're here to inspire you and, and help you grow your business. Now, this is not a webinar, friends. It is not a typical webinar. So if you signed up for the webinar, See ya, but hang around here because what's going to happen is you drive the content. What it is, what what it is, what it is that's bugging you, that's not working about social marketing, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, all these kind of things. Any question you've want, you've ever wanted to ask about how you can leverage it to build your business, now's the time. Uh, we've got Catherine He here. She gets a lot of money for a one-on-one -on -one coaching gig, is my guess. But you could ask her right now. We're going to answer. Now, the good news is some of you have sent in questions beforehand. And I promise you, like Kisa and Kim, we're going to get to them. Catherine has also planned a little bit of a surprise because normally we don't show slides, but we're going to show a couple because they're very important for you to see. Right, Catherine? We're going to, That's and, right. And I bet you those questions are going to come up because I hear them all the time, whether I'm coaching, whether I'm taking on new clients for the posting service that I do, or speaking in front of uh, travel industry groups at conferences and trade shows. So. I kind of know the questions that you might be asking, but throw them out at me anyways. I love hearing great questions. And don't be afraid. I'm I'm ready for those big, hairy, ugly questions that you're <laughs> kind of afraid to ask other people or you don't want to be heard saying, bring them on out. We're yeah, here. Bring that's it. that's what time. this is all about. Don't be shy. Bring it. Now, uh, uh, while we, uh, I ask you the first question, you asked a question right before I clicked the record button. So, friends, I'm going to ask you this question now, too. And I know Catherine's reason for this. Catherine, re-ask that question, you know, in the context of the addressing consumers. Would you ask that question again? And we're going to get people to start typing answers. Okay. The question of the day is when you're talking to your clients or you're looking to um, start working with a group tour leader, what is the best travel tip that you offer people? The best all around travel tip. Type it into the chat box and I bet you we're going to have a chance to use that a little bit later. Now, yeah. Stuart, you came up with a great question, a great tip, sorry, that you would say. You want to say that again? Yes, I, I would, I'd like to. My, my tip, and this was just impromptu, you know, was, hey, uh, let, let's get the worrying done now. So we're, we're not stressing. Uh, we're not inconvenienced when we get there. You know, like what can we book now? What can we take care of now so that we, we don't show up, the lines are long, it's sold out, the prices are high, or we come back saying, oh, we missed it. Because, and let me just take it one step further, Catherine. One of the things I like to tell travel professionals and consumers is, you know, especially for people who shop by price, I want cheap, I want lower cost. Well, okay, lower cost, strip down off the shelf, bare bones, but your disappointment cost will be higher. So let's get it done now before you go. That's my tip. 
That's a great tip. I love it, Stuart, because a lot of those things that they're booking now may be commissionable. So agents are earning some more money for themselves up front. Yep. My cool travel tip is um, a little less strategic than yours beforehand, but really strategic before you get on the plane. Mm -hmm. And it is to carry a little extra bag in your carry-on bag that you can throw your water bottle, throw your lip balm, throw a little snack or something into just in case your carry-on bag doesn't fit or the plane is really full that they've got to check your carry-on bag. Because I've been um, left in the dark, shall we say, and not had my water and not had my snacks with me and that's not a good day. So that's my tip. So okay. as you're joining us today, please just throw those into the chat box and um, we're going to come up with a way to use those later on. I know. I love it. I know where you're going with this. It's great. So go ahead and type in everybody. All right. We're going to start off with a big question. The first big question that's been on my mind, Catherine, and then we're going to get second. We're going to get to the questions that were emailed and we've got already a lot to cover. The Ooh. biggest question I have for you and that's been on the minds of so many of our entrepreneurs today is oh my goodness I used to depend on Facebook when I would type in stuff and post stuff and I would get leads and you know but now that sort of organic reaches could be disappearing so as a business person do I have to spend money on advertising what do I do now I, I know it's a huge question Catherine but I thought maybe we'd start off with the toughest one first give us an <laughs> overview and then we can sort of branch out after uh, to that question. I love it, Stuart. That is a big, hairy, ugly question. And it is huge. <laughs> You're absolutely right. But let's yeah. break it down into a couple of different things because okay. while we all know that organic reach is dropping, there's some things that we can do for free and for a little bit of money that's mm -hmm. going to still get us out in front of the right people at the right time. Okay. And the first one of those is video. Video is still getting great organic reach because people love short, snappy video. Right. And the second thing is advertising. So okay. advertising is a huge question in and of itself, but the novice level for advertising is if you have a great post that's getting good reach or it's a video post that's getting good reach, go ahead and click that boost post button mm. and choose um, the audience of your people who like your page and or people who like your page and their friends. Okay. Because you know how advertising goes, Stuart. We think that our fans and their friends are pretty similar. That's why they're friends offline as well. Right. So if you target your ad to the people who like your page and their friends, you'll get a double whammy there. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you'll pick up some new fans and some new business. So okay. as organic reach is dropping, those are the two places that you want to start. One of the biggest things that I caught here, and everybody pay attention to this, is that if you do a post, especially if it's video, and you see that it's doing well, people are enjoying it, and you leverage that one, you build it. So perhaps you're not creating it specifically with a boost in mind to spend money, but you see you're onto something big here. And, and, and then you give it a little push, a little push. And, and you can even put, I remember, because I do boost posts myself, and I know you could even put keywords or tag words, I'm not sure what it's called, so that it, that it helps the machines there figure out who needs to see it better. Is that right? So the more information you put in, the better audience, more qualified you're going to reach. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. You want to use keywords because, again, people might be searching on Facebook. You can turn those keywords into hashtags if you want. Um, and have it be short and sweet and a bit sassy if that's your style because it's going to catch people's attention. Um, mm -hmm. Then if you want to build on that a little bit, you might share that to a group that you have or a group that you belong to or share it onto your personal page. Or a thing that a lot of people forget about is just make a comment as your person on that post that's on your business page mm -hmm. just make a quick comment about it because then Facebook goes oh 
this is important. Somebody has commented. Somebody has shared this. And it gives it a little bit more reach. Mm -hmm. So some things there that are really simple to do. Mm -hmm. And I do them and they work. So that's, that's the goal because we want to always try to reach our fans. Plus, we want to try to reach outside of our circle as well to people who might become our fans and followers. Indeed. And, and let me add to that and say, friends, that if we focus less on just making the sale yeah. and more on building our list, okay, because if we focus on building the list, at some point in our relationship with these people, they're going to be ready to buy a vacation. Just because they're following you today, you meet them today, doesn't mean they're ready right now to buy. So they may be on your list for three months, six months, nine months. You got to have patience. Or maybe they've got kids, parents, friends, a group possibility that they know of to send your way. We can't rush these things. It's not like, oh, I, you know, I need coffee now. Is it, you know, it's like a commodity. Travel is when I'm ready to book a book. Right now I'm not, but right, it's about sharing and building lists. Now, let me go to, uh, I have a question here. Now, by the way, keep posting, friends, your best tip that you'd give to your customer, your consumer. We're going to come back to that. And by the way, again, if you join us for the first time, the slide that you see is not going to change yet. I'll let you know when, so you can toggle us if you think we're as gorgeous and beautiful as we know we are, we feel it, then you can make <laughs> us big on your screen. Now, I know you probably want to make Catherine bigger than me, but that's okay. But we are, we have a special treat. We have a couple of high content slides coming up, so we'll tell you when to toggle and make us smaller and watch the slide bigger if you want. But here's from Jennifer. I'm going to read this right from the slide, uh, the the thing here, Facebook, I've been paying for daily posts via Passport Online's ESP program, 15 a month for three posts each day on my agency business page. I've noticed attention has dropped off considerable. Is it too much? I don't regularly post myself, so I put this function on autopilot for now. Advice? Great question, Jenny. Um, Lately, Facebook's algorithm has changed a little bit. We don't, it's a secret algorithm, so we don't know the whole thing. But what we do know is their algorithm has changed so that it appears that our reach is dropping. However, what Facebook tells us is that it's showing your content to only to people who might be most interested in it which is mm. kind of good news because uh, the most interested people are the ones who are going to like, comment, or share your content. Hopefully mm -hmm. that's how Facebook chooses them. Um, but yet it, it also um, gives us the opportunity to reach those people, but we might also be missing people that mm -hmm. aren't engaged right now, as Stuart was saying, but might be engaged in the future. Right. So there's a bunch of changes happening there. Um, what I do when I post on behalf of travel agents is we have a theme of the week and mm. that theme might be the Galapagos since I'm going there tomorrow. We'll use that as an example. Tomorrow? You Wait, hold on. Listen, okay. everybody. How envious are we? You're going to Galapagos tomorrow. Have a wonderful trip. And I wonder if you're going to share when you're out there, if possible. Will you share no, and get us? I just might have to share some great pictures of the turtles and the sea lions and everything else. So keep watching. Um, so what we do is we have a theme of the week. So let's say that theme is Galapagos or even Ecuador. And then each day that um, we post on behalf of clients, it's something about that theme. So it might be a link to an article about the Galapagos and the cool critters you're going to see there. The next day it might be a graphic with um, some content on it that's travel trivia or a quote about the Galapagos. So we provide information, not just sales and, and marketing stuff, and it follows a theme. So yeah. that if somebody is even remotely interested in South America, for example, then they start seeing Ecuador, then they start seeing more about the Galapagos, by the end of the week, 
hopefully your phone is ringing, that they've gotten engaged with it, they love what they're seeing, and you know how marketing goes. It's that top of mind awareness. You have to see things, what is it, Stuart, seven or eight times before right. you take action on it. Yes. Yes. So thinking about your post in a way that's strategic and logical mm -hmm. is a way to boost some engagement as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, Jenny, the other part of your question was you're seeing your reach start to drop. Um, maybe you need to um, think about putting a boost post on it or starting an ad campaign around some of those posts that are getting some good engagement at this stage. Mm -hmm. You know, spend a couple of dollars, two or three dollars a day or two or three dollars for two days. See how it goes. See what kind of reach you're getting after that. Give it a whirl. Yeah, yeah. great stuff. Thank you for sharing that. I have a sort of a follow up here. Then, Lori, I'm coming to your question next. Um, and I don't, is it Mimi or Mimi? I know Mimi's and I know Mimi's and I don't know which one. So I'm going to use both Mimi and Mimi ask this question. Reach is based on the number of like page subscribers. So is there another way to gain likes other than through boost post? Oh, another way to gain likes on your page is what I'm hearing from Mimi or Mimi, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. There is a bunch of different ways to gain more fans and followers that like your page. Um, first off, you can start inviting your friends. So, you know, on your Facebook business page, off to the right side, there's usually a box that says invite your friends. Go ahead and click that and invite a few of your friends each day. The word of caution here is don't go willy-nilly and go and invite all 150 friends that you might have. But right. each day, just go in and invite 5, 10, 15 of them. If you go and invite that whole big batch of 150, mm -hmm. Facebook's mm -hmm. going to slap their hand, your mm -hmm. hand, because it thinks you're spamming people. Okay. So every day, first thing when you get in in the morning, go ahead and invite a few fans. Um, that's the easiest thing to start doing. The yep. next easiest thing to get more fans and to get more people to like your page is to send out an email or an e-blast talking about your Facebook business page and talking about what you're talking about that week, what your theme of the week is or what your top post is going to be about that week. Mm -hmm. And give them a reason to come and like your page. Mm -hmm. For example, you might say in your e-blast, you might say to them, uh, this week on Facebook we're talking about Ecuador and the Galapagos. Have you ever thought about going there? Wouldn't you love to be able to reach out and have those um, sea lions and, and giant tortoises right up close and personal? Something that's going to spur their imagination and get them, uh, give them a reason to right. come to your business page. Yeah, the reason. There's got to be a reason yeah. uh, to, for me to come to your page. And I'm going to give a quick example of what I did that worked wonderfully. Then Lori, your question is next. Then we're going to the questions that were sent in. Uh, for my, my travel agent training page, I have a Facebook page. It's, it's, a, it's a group, uh, it's a page, travel agent, Stuart Cohen travel agent training. And to celebrate the third anniversary of group boot camp and Catherine, now you were aware of this. You saw this. Uh, I did. Uh, I did a 30-30 campaign. Uh, thir 30 days of of Facebook Live messages and 30 tips. And uh, I'm not sure it was exactly 30 I did, but I came close. So <laughs> every day I sat at my desk and I bam clicked on the camera because I love the camera. Camera is my friend, and I just gave a quick tip. Bam. And I promoted it via email too. I sent out press releases because I gave a reason for someone to come follow me on that page and watch, hey, what's he going to post today? What's he going to talk about? It's definitely going to be about building business, but I want to see what he's got to say. And it really worked beautifully. So there's a reason for someone to come to keep to get more likes and to sort of share the love and, and spread it. So I did it and it worked for me. That's great, Stuart. What a fabulous way to get the word out there because, number one, you're using video, which everybody right. loves and which right. Facebook loves as well. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're supporting that campaign with email because email is still a great marketing tool. Yes. If you want to take that one step further, what you can also do uh, to ramp up your likes 
is in your email signature line. You know, okay. so you'd send out that e-blast like Stuart did with the content in it. And then in your email signature line. So every day when you send out an email, people are going to see this email signature line of yours. You're going to put a PS in that email signature line that has that reason right in it. And then not only do they see the e-blast, but every email that they see from you has that reason for them to come and like your page. I love it. And you do that in your signature emails. And I admire that. It's great uh, because it get, it's another piece of information to, to help me. There are, there are another reason for me to want to follow you. Now we're going to go to Lori's question here. Changing subjects a bit, I think I want to start using Instagram, but I don't want to use haphazardly. What's the best strategy, approach, and do I only use my own photos or can I use supplier photos? So we're talking Instagram. What would you say to Lori? Oh, great question, Lori. I love it. Um, if you want to start using Instagram, again, you want to think about a theme, sort of like you do on Facebook, and have a theme of the week or have a theme whether it's, you know, great beach cabanas or great beach chairs or some sort of a theme that goes along with it. Because, number one, it makes it way easier for you to think about things to post every day. And number two, it sort of builds your story and helps people understand who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. And um, Instagram is really all about great looking photos. So if you have some photos that are great looking, like photographer worthy images, start with those. Mm. And then also feel free to use your supplier images if you have permission to use them on Facebook. So you're gonna to wanna to check all the fine print on your supplier sites just to make sure that you've got the right to use those images. Hmm. Or you can also go and buy some stock images. Again, making sure that you have the right to use those on Instagram. Hmm. And start a story about yourself. Build on that story about what you sell, about destinations that are top sellers for you or that are your favorite destinations. Okay. Or maybe you do weddings and honeymoons. Start building the story about the planning of the wedding and honeymoon. Start building the story about some destinations that would be key for weddings and honeymoons. So it's about building the story. It's about building uh, your expertise, but also in that storytelling is key yeah. to your success on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. And, and friends, what we're hearing here is that it's not just about snapping a picture and putting it on Instagram or Facebook. There has to be a methodology. Don't, don't overthink this, but there has to be, let's simplify this, a story the, to use Catherine. There has to be a story. Tell a story. Be consistent so that when somebody does come, if you send an invite, visit your Instagram or your Facebook, they see, wow. This is kind of cool. I see all these gorgeous wedding pictures and man, my kids are getting married. Maybe I can help or maybe uh, 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 for travel professionals, you know, uh, you you want to show off um, your expertise that you're visiting that destination and, and you, you took an inside tour and you're showing us, hey, here's a real wedding. I snapped this picture. Look how gorgeous it is. I can do this for you. Yeah. Create a story. Make your own story. It, it, it takes a little bit of thought, a little bit of planning, but you can't just post it and expect things to happen. Um, all right. What I'm going to do now, let me catch up. We have a lot of comments and questions here. Okay. Let's go some? back a second to that Instagram yes. question yep. because yep. what you said is absolutely right because the more planning that you put into it, your reward is going to be greater at the end because people are going to know bam, she does group travel, or this person does weddings and honeymoons. So they know a little bit more about you and are more convinced of your credibility and your professionalism. Plus, the other thing about Instagram, don't forget you can post video there too. So there we go, yes. Stuart. That's uh, the Instagram question for Lori. Yes, and, and I, I just need to feel compelled to uh, do this because I have – I have some uh, speeches coming up, and I've been using this phrase a lot. Uh, look, look, friends, as travel professionals, you guys are influencers. 
if you're not an influence, don't call yourself a salesperson. You're an influence. You're influencing a person's decision so they, they, they you can transform their vacation from good to great. Okay, you're an influencer. Ideally, you want to become the celebrity authority. Now, I got this from my friend. It's not a new expression, but Terry Murphy, who's a, a local, a, a very well-known professional speaker and author, become a celebrity authority so that people seek you out. You establish integrity. They want to follow you. They want to read what you have. They wouldn't go anyplace else but to you, to turn to you. And if you can establish that on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, which we hopefully we'll get to talk about too, then people will follow you and eventually will buy from you. I love it, Stuart. That is amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, we're done. I got to go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Let me, buzz, let me buzz through. So we started off uh, earlier asking the question, what's your best tip? And a couple of tips came in for, for the other travel agents, but I'm going to read them all. Jenny said, follow Stewart's Group Bootcamp steps. Thank you, Jenny. You're awesome. We, we wanted more consumer tips, but hey, listen, I'll take a shout out any day of the week. You rock. Gene uh, says, always use a travel professional. Now, Gene, I love that, but you got to tell me why. There you you got to go. tell me why. It's important. And, See, and it's a difference between that person, why they want to use Gene, not Susie right. Q. Exactly. The, we, we have to get away from using just the feature and talk about the benefit. Forget the feature. Just the benefit. Why, Gene? Do I need you taking care of my Galapagos vacation? the benefit but I love it Lena says uh, my biggest tip is never try to pack in too much in a short period of time this is a vacation and it's much better with a real experience instead of collecting selfie pictures from a lot of sites that's great I love it and and for friends it, we and well, maybe we'll talk about this after Catherine maybe I can capture all these and publish them on, on one of the Facebook pages so agents can read each other's and learn yeah, I like when we get to share best practices inspire. Here we go. Stephanie well, Stuart, says. That's funny that you say that because that was one of my ideas for carrying this thing forward and, uh, I know. and giving it a life of its own because that's what yeah. this is all about. Here you and I are sharing our expertise. We're learning from travel pros. I used to be a travel consultant myself and I know you've been in the industry for a really long time as well. So we've got tons of great ideas. Why not share yeah. them? We help each other that way, and we help our industry that way as well. Yeah. And listen, friends, listen. I'm talking to all my travel agent friends out there. Listen to me. Don't sell yourself short. You think you don't know enough. You think you're not worthy. You think maybe they know more than you. If you're on this program right now, if you're tuned in, whether you're watching us live right now or the replay, you're here, and all the other agents aren't. I bet you you know a lot more than you think you know. Give yourself that credit. And, and frankly, the day that that consumer knows more than you is the day you're obsolete. It's the day you're invalid. But you're here today. And I guarantee you, each and every one of you have so much more knowledge and experience and great tips and advice. And you're going to save people out there from making bad mistakes, big mistakes. Okay, I got to dive back in. I like getting <laughs> on my... Uh, what do you call soapbox? that? My uh, soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie said, also, you as a travel agent. Stephanie, totally agree. Why you? Tell the story. And if you can do it in two words, three words, one sentence, why you? What's the benefit? Jenny says, offer clients uh, travel early before, um, uh, before the cruise tour begins. So expand the experience. Um, and Mimi says, uh, Mimi says, do your research so you're prepared. I love it. And that's where you as a travel professional can can help. That's where you come in too. Eileen says, um, uh, uh, exactly, Stuart, book everything ASAP before prices go up. Right. So th there's a little bit of a sense of urgency there too. Indeed. Jennifer says, uh, we already we took on Jennifer's question. Jill says, Jill says um, don't cheap out, quote, don't cheap out. Go for some extras. Ooh. And, you know, a great question to ask there, a uh, consumer is, what – what do you never get to do at home that you've always wanted to do on vacation? Let's Great do it. Question. Go crazy. I love it. Go crazy. 
Uh, Harvey says, uh, pretty much no matter where you are, you can find a Walmart or similar big box store to get non-touristy supplies and souvenirs. I bought great usable chopsticks at Walmart in China. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Harvey. Uh, Elena says, best travel tip, bring an extension cord with your adopter. Good idea. Uh, Lenore says, and make sure in your bag with snacks and water, this is to your point, Catherine, is a Ziploc bag with a change of underwear and make sure your toothbrush and deodorant is in your bag too. It's good stuff. Um, yep, got that. That's a great tip. And that should go in your little bag just in case. It just in case. Eileen says, I do the same. So I actually uh, go in and edit these auto posts. Okay, so she's referring when we were talking about those auto posts. So she'll actually go and edit them and add uh, hash, hash, hash marks uh, and contact information. So Eileen uh, uh, well, won't just make it auto. She'll go in, she'll customize and personalize, which I know, Catherine, was your point is so important to tell that story as well. Yeah. Um, let's say, correct. Uh, Dawn says, wow, Galapagos, how can we follow your posts, Catherine? Have a great time. Uh, so let me just, are you going to be posting anywhere where our friends can follow your journey? Yeah, I'll be posting on my personal page on Facebook. Okay. And that's my name, Catherine Heeg. And then on my business page, which is Customized Management Solutions, I might put a couple of things there as they relate to social marketing and, and travel and tourism. But on my business page, there'll be uh, regular posts as well that are going out that I've pre-scheduled, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> okay. Hey, listen. I get it. That's very cool. Uh, Judy said that our audio is going in and out. Judy, I don't know if that's affecting everybody. Uh, I don't see anybody else making that suggestion, but I hope you can lip read because if you can lip read, you're going to be okay. <laughs> um, uh, okay. I'm going to stop there because there's so much good stuff coming in. Let's go to this question I've got for you here, Catherine. This is from Kisa um, from Gr Group Escapes for Less based out of Detroit. Thanks for being here, Keith. Appreciate it. When promoting a group, do you think it more beneficial to create and post events on your own website or on a larger uh, platform like Eventbrite? And she says brown paper bag. Huh? I don't know what that is, but we know what Eventbrite is. What do you think about uh, that? Uh, you know, uh, when you have uh, a group, uh, sh should they use the, And I'm just reading the rest of her question. Uh, on her regular primary business page, uh, or create another specialty page. Um, what do you think about using your website versus one of these out these platforms that can sometimes promote it to the masses? Okay, so that's a great question. And hello from uh, Detroit. I used to live in Saginaw, so we're pretty much neighbors. Um, that's a great question. I would use a combination of all of those because you're going to be reaching people in different arenas and at different times with each of those platforms. So let's um, think about the scenario. So if you've got a group coming up, you're going to maybe build a landing page on your website or at least have a unique URL that leads to information about that group on your website. And then you can create an event bright event for the group or even for the consumer night you're doing ahead of the group to, to help you in marketing it. So you can have maybe two Eventbrite things. Right. And then on Facebook, you're going to want to post a series of posts, maybe even create a Facebook group mm -hmm. just for people that are interested in that destination. Mm -hmm. And Kisa, if you want to just type in what the destination is, that might make this a little bit more personal. So Stuart, if you can tell me when she types that in. Yep, yep. So then um, you might want to... Miami. Uh, Miami? Yep, okay, so then you might want to start a Facebook group called Kisa Travels to Miami or the Miami group with Kisa or something right. like that. And right. then slide into that group your Facebook friends uh, who are perhaps interested in going to Miami or who you think might be interested in going to Miami. Mm -hmm. And then create a Facebook event Okay. which uh, gives people uh, the itinerary, gives them the information on where they can sign up or find new information. 
So you've got a variety of different things going on. And then if you're using Pinterest or Instagram or Twitter, don't forget to use those platforms as well to drive people back to your website. Because mm -hmm. really what we own, the only thing that we own in this, this arena is our website. And that's where we have total control. Right. So you always want to be driving people back to your website where they can learn more information, where they can sign up for the tour, where they can learn more about you and your story. And then don't forget about LinkedIn because if this is a group that maybe you want to delve into some professional associations or maybe it's going to be an incentive group, you want to gather those people off of LinkedIn as well. I'm going to jump in and surprise you with a question about LinkedIn. One question. Okay. What do you think we, me included, everybody, general, that we do wrong on LinkedIn? What, what, what would you say? What would your answer be? What are we doing wrong with LinkedIn that if we did a better job of if we did differently, LinkedIn would work better for us? Ooh, that's a great question, Stuart. There's so many different things that people are doing on LinkedIn these days. Um, let's think about the best of the best. The, okay. the best of the best, those people who are using LinkedIn extremely well, mm -hmm. they are posting regularly, regular content, mm -hmm. and they're posting video, and they're taking advantage of the LinkedIn article. Mm -hmm. It used to be called Pulse. I think sometimes it still is called Pulse. But it's okay. like um, a blog on LinkedIn. So what I do is each week I load up one of my blogs as a LinkedIn article and then I re schedule it and release it. No, I don't think you can schedule it. I just mm -hmm. release it uh, every week on a specific mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And that article seems to get way more views than just a regular post mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And then video, of course, does exceptionally well on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. just like on any other social platform. But they yeah. have to be short videos. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, right, short. Short and sweet. I just read an article where it used to be an hour. Then it's 45. Then it's 30. Then it's 15. And that's why I I, I got to, you know, my, my Facebook um, live things. It, I didn't even time it. I just got the thought out and ended it, you know. And, and another thing, you're going to Galapagos uh, tomorrow. I'm going down to Cancun on Saturday to do another uh, group travel uh, summit, uh, group travel sales summit, and um, you better believe I'm going to be broadcasting Facebook Live there saying, hey, I'm on the beat, you know, real quick, get in, give a message out. Now, I know Facebook Live, let me just back up for a second. I've seen people, they could be on it for 10, 15 minutes, half hour, 30 minutes, because the longer you stay on it, the more people engage and talk to you. So, you know what, let me throw this back to you. That's another way of using Facebook Live. Instead of just getting in, getting out, you're interacting with people. Give us a little taste of what that's like. Oh, you could do so much with that, Stuart, because there's a couple of things, strategies that are working really well for Facebook Live. Okay. And the first one is to schedule it in advance. You can now okay. pre-schedule a live. So that, and then market it in advance. Because that way, your fans know when to tune in. It's yeah. not going to be like, oh, gosh, there he is. Oh, I missed the first 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell them Tuesday at 1 o'clock, I'm going live. Tune in. Here's why you don't want to miss this. Right. And bam, you've got an instant audience right there. Yeah. So tell people in advance. Market it in advance. Tell them the day and the time, along with the time zone, that, they're, that you're going to be live. And you'll find that your numbers just skyrocket. Mm. Yeah. And there's a couple of trains of thought on that. Some is, you know, get in, get out pretty quickly. But if right. you've got an audience and they're engaged and they're asking questions and there's great conversation going on, yeah. stick around. Um, yeah. Some destinations have done live video um, that they've gotten great engagement for. And they went to the maximum time frame, which was two hours. Mm -hmm. So judge your audience, market yourself really well in advance, and you'll be amazed at the yeah. difference it can make, not only in your reach and your engagement, but the new people that are going to like your page because yeah. they've seen you live and in action, sort of like we are here today. 
Yeah, and I want to pick up on that. And I didn't know. I did not know. I just learned from you that you can schedule a Facebook Live so people know. So listen up, everybody. And those of you who are in boot camp, you already know this. If you're not in boot camp, now you're gonna yeah, now you're gonna know it. I teach what's called a group launch sequence. Group launch sequence, which means the last thing you want to do is hurry up, rush, get the rates out there, then do the marketing. I call that the bass backwards approach. <laughs> You got to flip it. You want to do all the marketing first, build momentum, then open up for sale. So what, what you can do even before that, though, you want to make the big announcement that this is what you're planning. Hey, listen, we're, and I did this for my, my river cruise. I did a partial ship charter on a river cruise with my friends and family, and I practiced what I preach. So you could, so you do a little whisper campaign saying, hey, we're thinking about doing this thing, going to River Cruise. Then you send out a save the date. That's step two of the group launch sequence. See, I'm spilling the beans here, giving you the good stuff. And you could say, listen, we're going to make the big announcement of what we're doing on Friday the, the, the 11th at 10 p.m., whatever. And everyone's going to tune in and say, what's this big announcement? You're going to say, we're going on the Rhine. We're doing a River Cruise. And uh -huh. next week is our first um, – a sequence where we're going to tell you more about the ship, more about everything. And you're still not talking about price, but my point is what a great way, Catherine, to announce the official date, the official itinerary, the ship name, and, and, and about an upcoming group that you have. And you could do it with a group leader, too, sitting sitting right next to you, sitting right, right over here. See, you Stuart, know, that would be Facebook awesome. Lives, right? That would be a yeah. fabulous way to kick off that that group yeah. because you, you've told people about it, you've built it up, and then you go live. And what's better than seeing you live and the excitement and the enthusiasm that you build? People's questions yeah. are going to be flying in. Yeah, and that's right. That's when you can go on as long as there's people watching and asking questions. You, you could be on for an hour and 45 minutes. You've got them. It's, you know, it's, it's new. All right, question here from Kim from New Zealand. Now, we're going back to Facebook here. Uh, I live in New Zealand and have used Facebook for advertising, and I get lots of shares. So she's getting a lot of shares. Let's recognize that. That's great. That means we can surmise that her content is interesting. Uh, but no one buys. How do I get sales from those shares? Oh, Lisa, that's a great question. I'm Jim. really glad you're getting shares because that's spreading the word further than just that one person. So that's key. Um, I wonder what you're saying in your posts. I wonder if there um, is some sort of call to action. And that call to action doesn't have to be by now. It can be even, you know, let's connect and talk about your next vacation. Or um, pop me a, a private message if you have questions. Some sort of call to action that inspires people to take it one step further than just sharing. I like that because if you say book now, buy now, special deal, special sale, people may get turned off because it's an advertisement. But yeah. if you but if you pique people's interest, P I Q U E, and perhaps say something like that your your friends at uh, at such and such cruise line or whatever at this particular resort just gave you a phenomenal opportunity. If you may be in the market to book uh, a Caribbean cruise or a river cruise uh, within the next year, shoot me a note. And let me see what you're looking for. Perhaps I, I've got something special for you. You know, so say that you have information that you're only going to share if you're interested, and maybe they're not. But when they're ready to go, they'll come back to you knowing that, hey, maybe you get special opportunities. But you, yeah. you need that extra hook. It's it's a funnel. You want to bring them along that funnel uh, until they finally say, you know what, I need you now. Let's have a conversation. Perhaps you can help me. Yeah, and that's a good point because it is a funnel. You know, they start off up here, and you want to direct them down here. So, you know, let's throw something else out there. Um, if you're getting lots of shares, I wonder if, if it would help if you direct people to your website. Maybe, Lisa, you're already doing this, but maybe there's a blog that you've written about that destination that's getting a lot of shares. Or maybe mm. there's a video that's on your website that you can direct people to for more information. Because once we start moving people from your social pages to your website, 
you've got way more opportunity to interact with them because they can play around on your website. They can look at your blog, they can look at those videos, they can go check out your about section on your website, they can check out your FAQs, and you can then keep them moving between your social and your websites. Right, really keep them engaged, keyword. All right, quick question from Elena, uh, and then I, uh, I wanna invite people, because I've got another Ask Stuart Hour session, a public one lined up for May that everyone might be interested in, if you guys are interested in destination weddings. If you're in the business now, or if you want to get into the business, uh, stick around. I want to tell you about that. Then I also want to make sure we get to your slides. Uh, so Elena says, is there an easy way to make your own uh, landing page for your Facebook page to get email addresses? So I'm not sure it's called a landing page, but maybe more. Elena wants to know, how, how can you get an email address through through Facebook? Okay. Oh, that's a great question. Who asked yeah. that question, Stuart? Elena. 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 That's mm -hmm. an awesome question. There's a couple of ways that we can do this. Um, what the goal is, is to capture their email addresses. And how we do that is by giving them something. We need to give away something of value. And it's called mm -hmm. a lead magnet. So that lead mm -hmm. magnet could be an ebook about a destination, maybe it's an infographic with these top travel tips that we were talking about earlier, maybe it's a um, packing guide or something that's of value to your fans. Mm -hmm. And then you wanna set up a lead generation ad on Facebook. Okay. It's easy to set up and Facebook kinda does all the heavy lifting for you. You fill in a bunch of boxes and you can collect email addresses that way uh, hmm. by giving away something. Now, okay. Stuart, I know you use JotForm as well, and I love JotForm. I've started yeah. using that, and yeah. that's another way to do this. You can create a JotForm and mm -hmm. lead people to your lead magnet, mm -hmm. but before they get your lead magnet, before they get that packing list or that tip sheet, mm -hmm. they have to give you their email address. Right. So, Stuart, you use it. How have you used JotForm? Yeah, I use it uh, for surveys. I use it to collect data information from, from people rather than taking it over the phone and typing it in. Uh, and I definitely use it to build my list. I give away lots of free stuff, lots of PDFs, and, and I, I just ask, Kate, hey, just give me your email address and I'll email it to you. And I give people the opportunity to opt in or opt out because... I just like a travel professional. I know the way to build my list is to, is to is to share the love, is to give out a lot of free information that inspire people and say, you know what, I want to follow this guy Cohen, and oh, he's got something on sale, I'll buy it. And it's exactly the way an agent works. So that's I use I do use JotForm for opt-ins and for capturing email addresses and for learning more. I love doing the survey. The one final thing, the one question survey. Because we are surveyed to death right now, right, everybody? As soon as you make a purchase or you use a, a service or product, you get the survey. So I love the one-question survey, which is um, you know, click any that apply uh, w w the most important things on your next vacation. So it's one question, but they can click off two or 12 different things, and you get all the information you need. One-question survey. I yeah, get a very that's great. You can use Survey Monkey to do a quick survey like that too. Both are free. Um, Jot form I ended up paying a little bit for just because mm. I, I got so many people that answered my Jot form question that I didn't want to miss their email addresses. Yeah. So Jot form used to be entirely free, and of course it caught on. Uh, I'd li I'd like to take the blame for making them a big success, but. <laughs> I'm not the guy. I was one user that was an early adopter, and now you pay. You know, all these tools, we, they, they give you free up to a certain point. Um, okay, let me let me see what else we got here. Uh, okay, I just want to read through some more of these tips here. Lori says, uh, tips, invest in TSA PreCheck and Global Traveler, worth every penny. Number two, if traveling with someone in your family, like spouse, split your clothing between two bags. If one bag gets delayed, both travels will have some Clothes. Chance of both getting delayed is slim. I agree. Uh, Jenny says, oh, she's quoting me. My, my, one of my favorite quotes, Catherine, is no naked nouns. 
never leave a noun naked. Now, let me back into that because everyone's like, what the heck is he talking about? Isn't this a family show? It is a family show. Listen, friends, going back to the feature benefit thing, okay? If we're talking a feature, we're talking a noun. If we're talking a benefit, we're talking an adjective, okay? So get rid of the naked noun. Make sure it's it, it. There's always an adjective, or there's a verb, or an adverb, something that brings it to life that shows how you can do something, how it will feel, what you will be doing. Uh, you, you know, the experience immerse them. That's what I mean by that. Just so if anybody's curious, thanks, Jenny. Jill, let, let me keep buzzing through these, Catherine. Uh, Jill yeah. says uh, use a travel pro because then you have help when you are stopped in China and miss the ship. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Uh, Sherry says, when going on a beach destination, put your swimsuit uh, amid flip-flops and cover-ups in your carry-on bag so you have it handy immediately when you arrive if your room is not ready. I like that one. I love um, it. I put my yeah. sunscreen in there, you know, because I burn in about 10 minutes. So my sunscreen would be in there too. <laughs> exactly. So uh, Judy has this question. Then I, I want to go right to your folks. Stick around because uh, – Catherine's got some important slides on video. Is that if we go to that after this, Catherine? Sure. Uh, Judy asks, my question is, how do you have time for all of these activities? And I'm assuming Judy's talking about Instagram and Facebook uh, and still time to service our clients. Uh, Catherine, any time management ideas for, for having a successful social marketing campaign for your business, but, but not forgetting about your core business, which is talking to your client and that's who asked that question Stuart Judy Judy back in it Judy okay Judy that's a huge question and I know everybody's got that same question how do I find the time where do I make the time to make all this happen plus be brilliant at selling travel which is your job um, mm -hmm. sort of like Stuart's first tip I do as much as I can um, in advance planning out you know what the theme of the week is going to be what kind of graphics I want to use, um, where I'm going to get the pictures from. Plan all that out. Um, I have a calendar that goes out six to eight weeks in most cases. So mm -hmm. I know what I'm going to be talking about. And when I'm scrolling through my newsfeed or when I'm scrolling through emails and I come across a great article, I pop it into that calendar because then it sort of plans itself out over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when you're traveling or when something pops up that you think is fabulous, just slide it in there as a live current post. But knowing yeah. that there's other things that are in your funnel that mm -hmm. are going to come out on a schedule. And you can pre-schedule that through um, a posting service um, mm -hmm. or through um, pre-schedule them right on Facebook. So think about planning out as much as you can in advance. And then keeping some things on the fly so it feels um, current and it feels spontaneous as well. And keep it simple. You know, don't get go crazy nuts about trying to post uh, three times a day if, if it doesn't work for you. Post yeah. a couple times a day or post three times a week, whatever works for you right. and for your audience. I, and I want to echo that again. Whatever works for you and your audience. If you're uncomfortable using Instagram, whatever, a particular platform, then don't use it. You can set that as a goal to learn in the future. Perhaps hook up with Catherine, go to her website, attend some sessions, whatever, get the knowledge, but use what you're most comfortable using. But second important is the people you want as your clients, the people you want to follow you, where are they hanging out? Right. If they're hanging out on Instagram, you got to learn Instagram. You got to figure it out and use it. None of this stuff is complicated until you cross that bridge. So make sure you hang out where they're hanging out. Yeah, and that's where that survey comes in handy. That one question survey. Where do you spend most of your time in social marketing? Hmm. Um, and then that'll let you know, okay, all of my people are on Instagram or gosh, I didn't know how many people like Snapchat or whatever it is then that's going to be your driver on where you want to spend your time because that's where your clients are hanging out. That's where yeah. you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Yep. 
I agree. We got so I'm going to make this promise, everybody. We got five minutes left here. I told you, Catherine, what was going to happen. There's so many oh. more questions uh, that have come. Through. Eileen's going to be in Cancun. I will see you soon, Eileen. Uh, that uh, here, here's my commitment to you guys. If we don't get to your question live right now, I'm going to download the questions. I'm going to work with Catherine, and we're going to get you answers. We're going to post them. Guess where we're going to post them? On social media. <laughs> This way, everybody can, everyone can see your brilliant question, and everyone can see, I hope, will be our brilliant answer. So uh, you have my commitment. And by the way, if you want to attend this destination wedding sort of focus coaching session um, on my Facebook page, uh, my group, uh, Facebook page that's dedicated to you, travel professionals. It's Stuart Cohn Travel Agent Training. You can RSVP, but there's no time to talk about that because I want to go right now, Catherine, to uh, this, this important stuff on video. Can you take us through this quick? Yeah, just very quickly. Some people ask me, well, where am I going to find the time? Sort of like that last yeah. question we had from Judy. Well, yeah. where am I going to find the time to do all this? Well, creating video not only gives you a lot of bang for your buck because Facebook and the other social sites love it. There's mm. so many different places you can use your video, um, not only on Facebook, but you can share that video on all these other platforms that you see on your screen right now. And then that 78%, what is that? That is 78% of people watch online video every single week wow. and 55% watch video every single day. Mm. So if you want to start in one quick place, mm. video is where to start. And that's sort of why we were uh, collecting all of these travel tips. Okay. Because what you can do with all these travel tips that we've talked about and that you'll see on the screen and that Stuart's going to share with you. Mm -hmm. or create little videos about each and every one. Mm -hmm. So it's simple. Whip out your, your webcam, get in front of your, your phone, whatever it takes, create a short, snappy video. Mm -hmm. So maybe that travel tip is book everything as far in advance as you can. Mm -hmm. So you're going to tell people why that's important, what the benefit of that is in one minute or less. Mm -hmm. So you might have to think about this and say it, maybe even jot down some notes, bullet points for yourself. But when you can get that down to a minute and mm -hmm. produce a whole bunch of those, you can drip those out over time on all right. of your social sites, send them out in an e-blast, put them on your website. You'll have a whole collection of mm -hmm. great content and of content that speaks to what you do and why you're the professional yes. in this industry. So see, there was some method to my madness here. Yes, absolutely, and I appreciate you sharing that. And yes, I promise we will follow up with you guys, answer the rest of your questions. Uh, Lena uh, says, commenting on Lisa's post, I find that providing useful information on a regular basis without trying to sell keeps your name out there as a specialist and the person they trust. Uh, Harvey says, what do you suggest for a minimum home studio for broadcast green screen camera mic video controller i'll post my equipment on my facebook page harvey but you don't gotta you don't have to go crazy here i do have all that stuff the green screen all kinds of lights you name it i got it wireless lab but you know what you need a good camera i, I have a logitech camera that cost me well under a hundred dollars and i got a really sweet microphone here and this is under a hundred dollars <laughs> And 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 then you're you're in the ball game. And I do have an editing program. It's called Camtasia that I use when I want to do some really fun uh, post production work. Uh, one Harvey, more, that's, I mean, Harvey. That's a great question. I have a blog post that's I think coming out tomorrow on all of the the gear that I use for video. And one of them is a great microphone, which you'll see here. And another is that Logitech uh, camera, just like. Stuart has, but there's some other tidbits in there, especially if you want to do some Facebook Live from on the road, some other yeah. types of microphones and stuff. So you can check that out. Right, and right. A microphone that plugs into your phone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because you know there's that jack in your phone that you can just um, plug an external mic in. So when you're on a fam trip and you're interviewing somebody, you've got either two mics or one mic that you can share with that person. So it's really important to have good audio because otherwise, they're going to tune out right away. Yep. I agree. All right. Tell you what. Uh, we are out of time right now. Wait. Lori says, is there a good time? Facebook Live. Is there a good time of day? 
to do Facebook Live. I'm trying to go after busy professionals and active boomers, and I'm having a tough time finding them. This is the final question. The rest we're going to do online. What do you say? Oh, great question. Again, it depends on your audience. If your audience are all working, then you're going to want to do it after work. You know, think about doing it at dinner hour or just after dinner hour,、um, sometime when they're free. And if you really want to nail down when they're free, do a quick survey. When would you be most likely to watch a Facebook Live? 7 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m., and then you'll know. Great question. It is a great question. Hey, we are out of time, and I promise we start on time and end on time. Catherine, I'm so grateful you joined me today. I hope you had fun. It's been great fun. I love all these questions, Stuart. So many fabulous questions. And ideas, and now it comes down to putting them all into into play, doesn't it? Make it happen. And listen, we do. We're, we're going to commit to following up with some of your other stuff. We're also going to share. I will put a little chart together of all of your best practices of of what you your best tip is for a consumer. I hope you don't mind me sharing with everybody. Let's learn from each other. Everybody, thanks for joining us. I wish you happy sales.、Uh, and、uh, Catherine, thanks again. This was great. Well, thank you. It's been awesome. We'll see you next time.